guys, it's Victoria Vesh here with Validated by Victoria. I'm coming at you live from the Berman Podcast Studio, sponsored by Berman Law Group. I am so excited about today's episode. I am talking with Miss America 2016 and rising TikTok star, Betty Maxwell. She is incredible. She is amazing. This episode is awesome, so please watch the whole thing. And if you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, and share. Trying to grow the podcast here, and if you have any ideas, definitely hit me up. You can find me on Instagram at Validated by Victoria right here on YouTube and on Spotify. I hope you enjoy and here we go. Hey guys, Validated by Victoria and I'm here with the amazing Betty Maxwell. She came in all the way from Jupiter this morning so I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. So I'm just going to get right into it. You're Miss America 2016. You're growing on TikTok like exponentially. I think last night I saw you got like 900,000, so you're almost to a million on TikTok. Yes. <laughs> um, you have your book that's been out for a minute and had gotten a lot of good press, and I want to talk about that, and as well as um, American Idol. Wow. Like, <laughs> you have so much going on, and it's super inspiring, so that's why I wanted to have, have you on the podcast. Thank you. To kind of talk about all that you're doing um, and all that you plan to do and just inspire others. Like, you have a great story. Thank and you. And you're super motivational and just, like, your energy, like even when you walk in the office, just radiates positivity. You're so sweet. And so that's what I'm super happy to have you here. Thank you. So let's uh, talk about Miss America 2016. Tell me about your experience with that. Yeah, so um, it seems like so long ago now. It's like weird thinking it's been six years since I won Miss America. Um, but that was obviously like just a life-changing event for me and um, especially like not growing up in pageants I was very different from a lot of the other girls that I competed with who grew up in the system doing it their whole lives and um, so I did my first pageant when I was 19 and in college and so that's kind of like unheard of in the Miss America and USA systems um, just to kind of swoop in and do it out of nowhere and so I had no idea what I was doing and um, just kind of fell in love with the whole organization itself and what it stood for. And I, I really just grew into myself by competing in it and wanting to be a role model. Um, and so, yeah, I, I won Miss Georgia um, my second try. And then uh, two months later, I won Miss America. Tell me about your talent with opera. Like, wow, if you haven't seen it, go check our Instagram. Like, you can see some of the videos of your opera singing. Like, incredible. Thank like, you. <laughs> what got you into that? Um, so I have always sung since I was a little girl. Um, and then when I was about 14 is when I started taking classical voice lessons and, uh, started learning how to sing opera. So I took opera voice lessons, um, from age 14 through high school and then through college as well. And, um, I decided I was kind of up in the air with what I wanted to sing for my talent at Miss America and Miss Georgia, because I sing so many different genres and I didn't know what would be best for a pageant, um, being new to it and everything. And, um, I eventually decided on opera because it just kind of sets you apart as far as you have to have a certain skill level, a certain level of, um, I don't training to be able to sing opera, um, especially such a complex aria, like I sang Tutu Piccolo Edio from Madam Butterfly. And so um, I decided to sing that, and uh, it definitely, I think, set me apart. Um, I won a preliminary talent award at Miss Georgia and Miss America, so um, it was really fun. <laughs> like, going through that whole process, was it nerve-wracking? Were you, like, nervous at all? Like, especially on-stage questions. That gets to a lot of people, too. Yeah, on-stage question is probably the most nerve-wracking for me, um, just because you have no idea what they're going to ask you, and you try to prepare as much as you can by studying current events and everything, but you just never know. And... For me, like studying did absolutely nothing because they end up asking me about Tom Brady and the Deflate Gate scandal, which I knew nothing about. <laughs> and I'm like, this is not like what I spent all those hours and hours studying for, for them to ask me about Tom Brady. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're like sitting there like politics, current, literally like, world news. And it's like, exactly. hey, let's talk about Tom Brady. Yeah, let's talk about <laughs> football, though. The real issues. <laughs> Um, so that like totally threw me off. I was not expecting that, but, um, I just did the best I could with what I did know about it. Deflated football, something along those lines. Yeah. 
Um, and uh, I guess the judges kind of felt bad for me because <laughs> they came up to me after I won and they were like, or Brett Eldridge, who was the judge who asked me that question, was like, I'm so sorry about that question. I was like, it's okay, Brett. Like, we're cool. But um, yeah, he was like, I did not write that question. Like, the producers wrote it. I was like, it's fine. <laughs> okay, now I know. So the producers read the question. Yeah, sometimes so the judges you're like, don't. judges, like, come yeah. out writing some football questions. No, so, yeah, okay. it's not the judges. It's <laughs> always the production. <laughs> That's funny. So if, um, I have a lot of pageant girls who watch this, so if you had to give any advice to them about, like, entering into a pageant, I mean, you said it was, like, your second go-around with Miss Georgia yeah. and then and the Miss America, almost, like, third pageant. You got yeah, so, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think my biggest piece of advice, and this is, like, something that I've really, like, stood for throughout my years Miss America and beyond, is just to really, um, instead of trying to blend in with the other girls and do what everyone else is doing and hoping that that makes you seem more like you know what you're doing, and especially like for me coming into it knowing nothing and for other girls who come into it as a beginner, um, trying to blend in is only going to hurt you in the long run. What makes you different and what makes you stand out is what makes you unique and why the judges are going to gravitate towards someone like you because you're not like every other girl they've seen. Um, so if you can like really embrace the cliche of be yourself, even though everyone hears that every single day, if you can actually like take it to heart and harness what makes you different and capitalize on that, that is what's going to set you apart. That's how you're going to stand out and in a, in a, amongst 52 girls or however many you're competing against. Um, blending in is not what you want. You want to stand out. So be different. Like, don't be afraid to capitalize on what makes you different. Yeah, I think that's kind of big lately, not only in like a pageant world, but just in the entertainment world too. Yeah. I'm learning that even the stories that are hard to tell, people want to hear it. So, right. um, and that's what makes you a part of people want to see like the realness, the rawness. Like, they don't want to see this little curated, perfect image of someone. Yeah. And I feel like somewhat the world is changing to shift into that like hey let's just be real and yeah you keep it real too so I that's try awesome. yeah. that's so important and that's like another thing like people always tell me is like uh you're so real or whatever and it's just because like that's important to me and I think it's important for everyone to again like be yourself be different like don't yeah. be afraid to stand out yeah exactly I love that yeah. <laughs> so after your reign you wrote a book what like prompted you to write your book um so actually a uh publisher reached out to me and were like have you ever thought about writing a book and I was like well um honestly no like I'm not a very big reader um I'm just like too ADD like I get distracted <laughs> like I'm not I'm not gonna sit down and just read like I, I just get so distracted but um but the idea of writing a book was very intriguing to me just because I felt like after a year of being Miss America, people have this idea of you, but being able and being controlled for a year by the organization and just, you have no, like, you just have no control of your life basically yeah. and over wh who you're portrayed as, um, even though it may seem the opposite. Um, and so the idea of being able to tell my point of view, my story from, from my point of view, I felt like that was really important to me after that year to be able to get that out there and tell people like, Hey, well, I'm going to set the record straight. Like, this is me, like yeah. what you've heard or what you've read or what you've gossiped about or whatever they're writing on the, the anonymous chat boards. Like none of that is really me. So I just want to say what I am and who I am so that we, I can just put it out there. And if you want to know, like read my book. Yeah. So that That's was so important funny. to me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was listening to another podcast. It was about like some, child star and he was like now I'm trying to change he came out with a book wait I think it was Drake and Josh and Josh Peck oh really yeah, and he came out with a book because the key I saw that yeah I think it was on like a BFS pod or something I don't know I was watching that but 3 a.m when I'm away <laughs> I like find random podcasts to watch and I like was listening to him it's something similar because he came out with a book as well and it's just like hey this is like really me I'm not like yeah. this kid anymore that they portrayed me to be and yeah, I just think that's so interesting because, you know, we see you're like, oh, this is Miss America. It's like, no, I'm Betty. Yeah, <laughs> like, like there's this more to me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then, you know, you have, do have to fit inside this kind of mold for a year. Right. And now it's like, hey, I'm not just that cookie cutter mold. I'm like actually a, you know, real human being yeah. going through stuff and exactly. having other things going on. So. Right. And like you want to be able to like 
be other things without people like constantly judging you or directing you back to Miss America, Miss America. It's like almost like it's like this thing that it's something I'm actually dealing with a lot right now with American Idol, which yeah. I know we're going to get into. But um, just always being <laughs> just always being stereotyped as the pageant girl yeah. when I didn't even grow up in like in that like I'm the farthest thing from a pageant patty or whatever you want to call it. And I'm always immediately stereotyped as that as soon as someone finds out I was Miss America. Mm -hmm. And I, it's like this accomplishment I want to be proud of and I want to be able to talk about. But at the same time, it's like, I don't want to talk about it. Like, I don't want people to know that about me almost because it's like they immediately judge you and stereotype you. So it's, it's tough. It's a tough accomplishment to live with. Yeah, I understand that. Like, it's so sad the world still keeps putting people in boxes. And yeah. Like, you can't deviate. You're, like, stuck in this little box. And I'm like, yeah. no, no. You can be a model, lawyer, Miss America, American Idol. You don't, yeah. like, quit, like, putting us just, like, in your little Miss America box. Right. And it's sad. You say pageant, Patty. And, like, I didn't even wear anything. And I hear that sometimes, too. And I'm like, oh, okay. Just That's so, like an archaic term. I like, know. Like, that behind. I know. I hate when people use that. It's like it's, it's like time to move on. Pageants have evolved. It's like pageants offensive. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm like serious. Why, why, what really is a pageant, Patty? I don't really even know. I mean, yeah. And then like everyone has their own version of themselves when they go into pageants. So yeah, it's just really sad when you see people just kind of lump you in a group. Definitely. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's very frustrating and something I'm like dealing with on the regular because people get mad if like you don't talk about it, but then they get mad if you do talk about it because they're like, oh, she's just crutching on the fact that she was Miss America to launch her into this and that. It's like, no, but it's a part of who I am. Like, yeah. It's a part of my life. But if I don't talk about it, then you'll be like, she's ashamed that she was Miss America. No. It's like, no, I just want to live my life. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> I mean, it's an amazing, like, not a lot of people can accomplish that. It's an amazing accomplishment, but that doesn't define all yeah, of you. Yeah, exactly. So, and I think that's the end of the day, and that's the most important. And yes. So, like, even yes. when I see you, I'm just like, oh, I mean, amazing accomplishment, Miss America. Obviously, I want to talk about that, but you, know, you have so much going on, like your TikTok. So I'm just going yeah, like, to segue into that. that. <laughs> so your TikTok, I see it on my For You page all the time. Okay. I follow you, of course, but like I see it on my For You page. Like what got you into like doing the impressions? Oh my gosh. If you haven't seen your TikTok, <laughs> What's your TikTok handle? The same as Instagram at Real Betty Maxwell. Well, yeah. Okay, yeah, um, perfect. So follow her on Instagram, then TikTok, and check out her TikTok. Like, oh my gosh! <laughs> like, I never knew. I know. <laughs> it's like this. Like, I think I've randomly. Okay, let me backtrack. Okay. So I think it was during. Did you start during like the pant like quarantine? Yes. Like, yeah. I mean, yes. That's when everyone kind of started a TikTok, and, and I was scrolling. And I saw you. And I'm like, wait. I know her. <laughs> I know her. I'm like, what is this? This is so cool. That is it's so, so unique. What what made you like what prompted you to like, hey, I'm just gonna do this? Uh you know, it I've always been able to do impressions and like it's always just been kind of like a hidden talent that I've had. Like I'm not like trying to like capitalize on my impressions or like how good I am at memorizing quotes from movies. <laughs> like this just like some stupid thing that I'm able to do. But when like the pandemic hit and quarantine and everything. It's like, everyone's kind of getting on TikTok. And then I was like, maybe this is the the venue for this. Like, maybe this is the outlet for sharing that part of me. And so I obviously started out just posting like singing videos and stuff, which did well. Some went viral. I was like, oh, this is cool. Like, and then I was like, my husband actually was like, you need to do some of your impressions. Like you should. And I was like, ah, like, okay. Like, I don't know if this is going to hit, like, or people are going to think I'm good, but um it's like something I've grown up doing so I was like okay I'll I'll just do it and then like the first one I did went viral and then every like every single one after that has just been growing and growing and growing and growing and now I'm almost at a million followers and it's like it's it's crazy it's crazy TikTok is amazing honestly like it's really cool to like have a social media outlet that you you can actually grow and like yeah it's easy to put yourself out there and get exposure and opportunities come and, and, and like, it's just so different from Instagram where yeah. it's really hard to grow. Yeah. Hard to get exposure. I've noticed that on Instagram that it's pretty hard to grow. And then it like, is. I feel like on TikTok, the more authentic you are, the more yeah. viral you grow, which is like really, really awesome. <laughs> yeah. They celebrate like your realness and just yeah. like 
not like putting well, you, on. You hear all the like the story times. And yeah. Like, I, I feel like I get a million of those. Like, yeah. Bad dates or something going on. Like all the real like raw stories on there like really get pushed. That's what I like. Yeah. I mean, in the for you page, you can scroll like Instagram doesn't have that. So. I know. I know. But I feel like Instagram's just trying to copy everything TikTok does. Yeah. It's no like, offense Instagram. But. No, no offense Instagram. But, um, but now with the reels on Instagram, it's yeah. like one more thing to like have to post and keep up with and like try to stay relevant. Yeah. So it's tough. But TikTok is like, I just have so much fun over there. Like it's a good time. Okay. So how, so people, I see people request sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> and then you kind of do it. Like mm -hmm. what, what is your favorite like impressions? Like it's your top three that you like to do. Um, I don't know. That's so tough. I, um, I love doing anything Disney, obviously. Yeah, so like, you're Disney princess one. I do yeah. lots of Disney ones um, because that's what people love. Like, that, yeah. I give the people what they want. But um, I love doing Lois Griffin. That's the one that I did. <laughs> <laughs> I did that one in my Miss America interview. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> okay, wait, wait. We need a Lois Griffin one right now. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Uh, hey, Dad. If you're gonna shoot me, you might wanna tie your shoelaces first. <laughs> that is freaking incredible. Oh, oh my god. Thank you. Wait, how'd you do that in your Miss America interview? Like, well, how'd you tie that in? So, you know, like on your resume, you have to have like interesting facts or whatever. So, I would always put that I do accents and impersonations. And so, usually, you could count on them to ask me to do something in an interview. And so, Lois, I feel like everyone kind of knows her character yeah. and her voice is so iconic. Yeah. Um, so, that's a good one for me to go to when I when someone asks for one so I they asked me to do it, an impression and I was like okay well Lois Griffin like here we go that one that, that one hits really I did far. that one all the time during Miss America week or the two weeks like my my friends like the other title holders would be like Betty do Lois or whatever and I'd just be like walking around like talking like Lois Griffin people just like loved it and I was like this is hilarious like I've never had a, a place to share this before but <laughs> It's and so now funny. you have TikTok that you're sharing out. I now. love it. How many videos do you record like a day? Or? Um, it just depends, honestly, because it's like I do like a million different. Just like you, you know, yeah. like you have your hands in like so many different pots. Yeah. It's like when people ask you what you do, it's like, well, let me get this, my list. I, yeah, out. I'm like, like sometimes it's like the CVS receipt of like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, you know, like here you go. <laughs> exactly. So it's like it's hard to just designate time for everything, but I usually try to put up. If not every single day, I try to put up at least one video every day. If not every day, then I'll at least like record some and put them up in a few days or whatever. But um, every week, I'm usually trying to put out at least three or four videos um, just to stay, yeah, stay relevant, stay on top, of, stay on top yeah. of it. Yeah, I, I try to because and like the more followers you get on TikTok, like they're demanding, like they want their content. <laughs> like, When's the next video? They want it now. Yeah. So yeah, and they're like constantly like asking, requesting different impressions, and like I'm waiting day seven about asking for this and I'm like I have life like outside of this yeah. but um but it's amazing I love it when's your next video dropping um well I just put one up yesterday okay. um I did I did some um more Disney uh, impressions um some that I've never done before so go check it out okay. um but I'll probably end up putting one up either tonight or tomorrow so okay yeah all right be on the lookout at real Betty Max on TikTok Instagram. You got you it. You to check out her impressions, y'all. I'm not even just like <laughs> saying that because like I love you as a person, but like <laughs> thank it's, you. I it's truly it. incredible. Like, even thank just you. a little snippet of the lowest. Like, I don't want to like give them all because I'm gonna make them like have to go watch her Instagram. To totally, totally, like, totally. Thank you. Just yeah. a tease. And I mean, you're so close to a million, so it's we gotta so get crazy. You there. <laughs> it's, it's crazy that that's like attainable at, yeah. at this point. Like I'm just blown away by it. I'm so thankful that people like care give a yeah. crap like thank you yeah <laughs> so, no just like i said like we were talking about keeping it real and authentic and then yeah. just like showing your impressions like <laughs> i i don't want to say it's like a goofy side but it's like a cool like real side like miss america impressions and then now what we're going to talk about is american idol super Let's random do it. first of all super random because i was like I feel like me and you are so much similar. Sometimes you just come out with like random things. I, oh, hey, I just did this. I'm like, doing this now. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, what in the world? So what prompted you to get into like the American Idol auditions? Oh my gosh. Well, I posted a whole video talking about it when they first reached out to me, but um, it all happened because of TikTok. Like mm -hmm. they reached out to me and were like, hey, like you ever thought about American Idol? And I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm not one to turn down opportunities that are 
good opportunities for exposure, especially when I'm trying to, you know, make it in this fine arts industry. And I mean, you have to take opportunities. I'm not going to turn that down. And so um, a lot of people, you know, might gossip and say and think, oh, well, you know, why would you try to do something like that when you you won Miss America? Like if that's up, you know, like you already won something. So why would you put yourself up again to maybe lose or to maybe it's like, I'm not thinking about it that way. I'm thinking, here's another amazing opportunity for my singing career. Um, why would I turn this down? I don't care if I win. It's about exposure. If you're not continually growing in life, then what are you, what right. are you doing? You're I just being stagnant. Exactly. Like, yes, you won Miss America. I mean, I, I don't want I'm not hating on anyone, but sometimes you see people wearing crowns and that's it. Right. Which, and you then, know, that's their life path. That's what they sure. want to do. And you see a lot of, I a majority of the queens do that. But I think it's very admirable when you, you see someone like yourself, like who wins like something so big and then keeps pushing for the yeah. next thing. Because I think, you know, that's kind of life. Like you don't want to stop after you've achieved right. something. Like you got to keep going. Exactly. I mean, that's how I see it. And, and I feel like God puts opportunities in your path. And I always pray about anything I, that comes in, any email I get or, or opportunity. And I'm like, you know, if, God, if this is for me, then like, you know, I'm going to follow through with this. And if it's not, then you'll take it away from me. And I, and I'll know that it's time for me to go down to go on to the next thing, or this isn't for me. And I prayed about it so much. And I just felt like I have to do this. Like, why would I not do this? It's just such a great opportunity. Um, so I just decided to do it. And, um, and then they said, okay, well, you're going to audition for the celebrity judges. And I was so excited. And um, obviously my auditions already aired, but um, you can see it on Hulu or on okay. YouTube or something. Um, but next round, they just actually wrapped up the all the auditions, the initial auditions, the golden ticket auditions. And so next week starts Hollywood week. So that's what so you can this see. This has already been pre so, like, I don't know if you yes. can say this. This has already been filmed. Yes. Okay, Hollywood. so you kind of already know what's going on. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, I'm not going to lie, that kind of sucks, though, because you're like, I already know, like, the rest of the storyline, at yeah. least to some point. Yeah, I, not everything has, yes, but I do know up to a certain point, yes, what's going to happen okay. and what happens, but... So you went, um, but your ticket got you to Hollywood, right? Yes, okay. so I got a golden ticket from all... I got a yes from all three judges, which was super exciting, um, and, yeah, I'll be... Uh, on the Hollywood Week episodes, and um, Does that start? so I can actually announce it now. Okay. I haven't even announced oh it on gosh. social media yet. So you're getting the, oh, I'm getting the inside scoop. <laughs> yes. So um, I will actually be on the first episode of Hollywood Week, um, airing this Monday. Okay. This coming Monday. Um, so I think it's at eight seven Central. So on ABC. So tune in, to see me compete um, in the first round of Hollywood Week. Oh my god! See what this happens. So exciting! I'm so excited. <laughs> How was it meeting the celebrity? Celebrity judges. Okay, so I saw Katy Perry with the crown. Oh my god, I was so stressed. <laughs> like, I can tell you were very stressed. I was trying to just play it cool, you know, because like I don't, I, I'm, I'm in the middle of my audition and they're like goofing around with the crown and yeah. stuff. And I had to tell them like the only rule is like you can't put on the crown. Like it's not my rule. It's the Miss America rule. Yeah. I'm sorry. Like if it was up to me, obviously everyone can try it on. I don't care. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so while I'm singing, Katy Perry is like pretending to like like she's gonna put my crown on and I'm like oh my god like Miss America organization is gonna email me and they're gonna call me and they're gonna be mad at me and I don't know so I was really nervous about that but I was trying to act like it was all fine I'm just I mean you're singing. singing yeah <laughs> like in the middle of singing like I was, I was like oh my god all my all of my fans on TikTok were getting mad they were like why is Katie doing that during your audition? That is so rude. And I'm like, it's fine, guys. It's I, fine. I feel like that's just so Katie Perry. I just like, it is. Yeah. It's her personality. Yeah. But um, and I think that's like a good test too, because you know, like in the entertainment industry, you're gonna have people who try to distract absolutely. you while you're like doing something. And so. I've been through that a million times. Like I, I've, I've obviously performed so many times in my life. Like I'm, I've seen and done everything. Yeah. And you just have to be flexible and keep going. The show must go on. You know. So. I'm, I was hoping that they were like still at least listening to me or yeah. maybe they already made up their minds. They were like, oh, we're going to give, give her a yes. So we can just goof off now. <laughs> so I was like, I hope that's what's happening. But um, it ended up going really well. Obviously, I got a golden ticket. And um, and yeah, meeting the judges were they were awesome. Um, there were a few things that happened in my audition that they didn't air in the episode. Um, like at one point, Luke, you know, in my audition, he did say to me, like, you know, pageant girls sing like pageant girls but you don't you sing like a real oh. singer and I was like well thank you but also kind of a backhanded comment yeah. but okay <laughs> um kind of mean to pageant girls yeah. but okay um but 
like like I was saying earlier, they were so the judges were actually I felt like really distracted and like stuck on that stereotype once yeah. they found out I was Miss America, and um. Well, they made you bring your like crown. Yeah, they made sash. me bring it in, and I saw your Instagram like you didn't really <clears throat> want to do all that. Yeah, I didn't, but you know production you yeah. you, know, you have no control and of course you know everyone online was like why did she bring her crown in why would she do this like I have no control okay like yeah. I just had to and um <clears throat> so they immediately like prejudged me I felt like and at one point in my audition Luke was like after I sang he was like you know you don't want to be too pretty yeah. he literally said that he was like you don't want to be just a pretty face and I was just like speechless like I didn't know what to say like are you serious? Like, I'm here to not be, like, I'm here yeah. to, to sing. Like, I don't want you to judge me based on my looks. Yeah. Like, I feel like you're judging me based on my looks. So that was interesting. It kind of became like my mission to prove to them that I'm not just that, or that I am like more than just a pageant girl or whatever they want to call me. Like, I felt like I needed to prove to them, like, there's more to me. And so I feel see like if that happens. I, I understand that completely <clears throat> on like a different level, like constantly having to prove myself, even in a professional realm. Like, Absolutely. Okay, take me seriously. Even I was on the phone call for this, like, hey, take me seriously. And yeah. I'm talking about to like, you know, I, looks are one thing but like what's inside is another and that's what I'm like yeah constantly it's a battle of like this worldly <clears throat> ideal that I'm trying to prove and like myself like I'm worthy enough I'm intelligent enough right talented enough and like, even if you're pursuing like like your essay swimsuit thing which yeah. is amazing oh, congratulations thank you. Thank that's you. so cool um I've actually thought about doing that like so you many should. times but I'm like I'm not that like I can't well, like do you it. said about <laughs> your idol thing so uh, a friend actually my friend <clears throat> Allison had, had mentioned it to me mm -hmm. and then I had like two other friends say something like hey are you doing this because I've done it yeah. before and I got like the golden ticket but I didn't get through and then kind of like was put on my lap again and I'm like you know I, I there's now more to the story I can tell that continues my interesting journey mm -hmm. of life. So I'm like, do I do this? Do yeah. I not? So I prayed about it as well. And then yeah. I'm just like, you know, I'm, I'm just going to do it. Yeah. And I like, it was like two minutes before the deadline I submitted and uh, <laughs> everything came to fruition. And I'm just like, whoa, like, is this, God, this is really meant to me. I go to the next round. Okay. Like, hey, this is really meant to be. I go to the next round. Okay. Exactly. Here's my ticket to Medicare Republic. Like, yeah. Like, like, it's just like crazy, like how everything rolls back. You just kind of have to go for it sometimes. You yeah. Know, you feel like. For myself, I was like, I don't, I'm not sure if I'm ready, but I don't think any of us are ever 100% ready yeah. for anything in life. So, yeah, it's that's kind of true. A crazy. Long. I mean, but even with that, like, I'm having to prove but to that's myself, what I was going to say. I'm not yeah. just some, like, cookie cutter girl. Yes, I'm not, like, the most diverse or the most skinny, but, like, I, I'm going through stuff. I feel like that resonates with people as well. And I try to be as open and honest with it as I can yeah. before I start like crying. But, no, like, it's, yeah, I yeah, understand. And be like, hey, I'm going, I'm a real girl going through this stuff. Like I went through law school. Like I feel like I have to tell my, <laughs> every time I meet someone new, you're probably the same way. I feel like, all right, here's my, law here's my story. <laughs> my story. And I'm like, have all like the bullet points I've hit. And they're like, oh wow. Like I, even the other night yeah. I was at an event and they're like, oh wow, you really, you really have more to you than just looks and I was like shocker I'm a human being <laughs> and I'm just like Ugh. yeah that's crazy yeah, like, I, this totally like the back resonate. I totally resonate like with that. that like so much and it's like you're constantly feeling like you have to prove yourself when it's like I know my worth and I know it doesn't matter if everybody else does but I want people to see me for more than just like a body or a pretty face or whatever even if and that's what I was getting at earlier is like even if you're pursuing something like as I swim, that maybe is about physical looks, but it's like, that doesn't mean that there isn't more to me. Yeah. Like, that doesn't mean that I'm not as super intelligent, super accomplished. Like, this is just something that I'm pa also passionate about. Yeah. Like, and should be celebrated I, for. I had some hate comments like, hey, get, get, oh, this is like your goal, get better goals. And I'm like, you know, this is like one of my goals I want to pursue. And it's a pretty high up goal. So, I mean, you get the haters too. Obviously, but, yeah. And it's hard to stay motivated. But um, what was, back to your American Idol experience, like what no. was one of your like actually really good critiques that you kind of took with you? Um, You know. That was actually helpful, not like a bad you know? Yeah, not like you're just a pretty yeah. face. Um, I think them telling me that, um, I needed to tone it down. Like I was at first, I didn't really understand like what they meant. Like, why would they like, 
I didn't feel like I was toned up like or yeah. whatever. I didn't feel like I was being over the top, but um, I guess I'm constantly, again, I guess this goes back to trying to prove yourself, but I guess I'm just like trying to show them like everything I've got in one song, you know? So I'm just pushing as hard as I can and trying to show like what I can do, but you're also nervous and you're also like, like I connect with my songs and I'm feeling them and I'm passionate about it. And so maybe it can, did come across as like over the top, but, um, I think that's good feedback. Like you don't always have to push as hard as you can. Like, it's okay to like be quiet in some parts of the song and like grow and be bigger, which in my normal everyday singing, I obviously do, but in a setting like that, like where you're trying to prove yourself, I feel like I maybe was pushing too hard. So I think that was really good feedback and something that I'm definitely going to carry with me forward in the competition. Cool. How long did you wait to audition? Because I, I had some friends who did it. I mean, I, I don't know where they really got, but they mm -hmm. had to wait for a while. So like between what and what? Like wait the, between in the where you had to wait in line. Or oh, like, okay. Like, so line skip. Or so like, okay, part. yeah. So it's actually not like that anymore. Okay. So they because I auditioned back when I was in like high school, yeah. and um and it was it was like that back yeah. then, like where it's like a cattle call with like hundred thousand people, and you have to wait all day, and then they call you up. Yeah, and, that was like my friends. Had yeah, to yeah, and you have to you have to sing in front of like so many sets of like preliminary judges before you get to the celebrity judges. And so, um, yeah, I didn't make it past the first round of judges. It's like, there's like four or five and I didn't make it past the first round when I was like 15, but that's fine. I wasn't ready. <laughs> but, um, now it's like a lot of people are like reached out to, like I was like, um, by casting people, a lot of people are, um, submitting online auditions and that's how it's like all done now is all online and so basically like the producers let you know if you made it or if you're going to get to sing in front of the celebrity judges before you're there or anything like that okay. so it's like you submit your audition and then they let you know so and there's then, no real waiting yeah time. so when you go to the audition everybody have, there like, yeah okay. everybody there is going to audition for the judges oh, it's not nice. like some people are some people aren't or whatever um but yeah so it's it's a lot different now like with obviously technology and everything yeah. advancing so much like it's it's a totally different process which was interesting that's cool now how are you friends with any of the people who got like tickets oh yeah yeah it was a really really cool experience just like getting to be surrounded by so many people who are like passionate about the same things as me and such talented singers like oh my gosh I never get to be around people who are like like I don't, like not sounding like weird or cocky but like on your level yeah. you know like as good and better than you are. And that's so cool because it pushes you to be better. And um, and it humbles you a lot. Um, and there were so many people there that were just like so freaking incredibly talented. And I just loved being around them. Like they're so passionate about the same thing that you are. And they're so good. And everybody, honestly, everybody was so nice. Like I can't even think of someone, anyone that I wouldn't like be able to just shoot a message to or, or be friends with like, I made a lot of friends and I think that was, that's probably the most rewarding aspect. Like it always is, yeah. even in pageants, like it's about the friendships. Yeah, even that you thing, we have like a group chat and we're all yeah. like friends and talk all the time. And I yeah. Think, I think that's something like when you're going into a competition, everyone's like, oh, I'm just, I gotta yeah. keep my blinders on. I'm just like, you know, maybe I used to do that when I was like a kid. Yeah. <laughs> in pageants and you like thought that was the way to go, but I really don't think that is. Like even if you're competing for something and there's supposed to be a winner, like, yeah. I think uplifting other women as well. And, and if you like don't win, each other. Yeah, if you, you don't win, then it's life. like, yeah. exactly. Like, what did you, you get out something. of it? Like, I got friends. Yeah. yeah. And everybody, everybody at American Idol has been so amazing. Even the production team has been incredible. Like, I just, it's been an amazing experience. That's awesome. Yeah. So, um, your genre, do they tell it? Do you have to, like, pick one? Yeah, you do. Which is so weird for me because, like, that's another thing they said to me in my audition was like, you, you're, you don't want to sing everything, which, cause that's what I kind of do. And they're like, you want to narrow yourself down to like one genre. And I'm like, Oh my God, like, how do I even do that? Like, I don't, I don't know. And 
a Disney genre? Is that a genre? <laughs> Disney? <laughs> like, that's like my goal in life. Like if I had to say like my dream as a singer, it would be to like voice a Disney princess like in a movie. All right. So that's like Put putting it out that. there. I've yeah, said it yeah. many times yeah. and, and you know, TikTok. To you. I think, yeah. I mean, everyone's like tagging Disney. I'm like, get Disney's attention. Yeah. Like I feel like that's the I way I'm going to do media, it. I think social media, honestly, people hate on it so much. Oh, you're on Instagram. Oh, you do TikTok. Hate on it so much. But mm-hmm. that really is That's places. where you get it. Uh, exposure and, and recognized I'm, i've done like two other episodes on social media one with my friend alice and one with my friend jessica and we're like social media literally is the way to it's get the key the exposure it you're is. not getting like found in the mall anymore you're or <laughs> right you know, like you're you're getting found on social media absolutely like you see like the charlie the millions of the world like absolutely just grow from that and they and became I, stars yeah so like, and i keep doing what you're doing i am yeah. yeah i'm just praying and like i am putting it out there and I'm, you know, hopefully it will come to me. But, um, but yeah, so for American Idol, I'm putting myself in that country Ooh. genre because obviously I've sung a lot of country in my past. Yeah. I released a country album when I lived in Nashville and, uh, Katy Perry was like, I want you to do country. So I don't need any more confirmation than that. I'm going to do what she says. Yeah. I'm going to go towards country. Um, I love country music, so... Um, is that... Should we see how goes? country, maybe, in the next? I, we'll see how it we'll goes. See. I mean, I'm I'm definitely going to listen to what the judges said. I think a big part of this whole competition is taking their critiques, applying them, yeah. and not, not, like, doing your own thing. Like, you need to be willing to be molded and critiqued, and I definitely can take criticism with the best of them. So I'm going to listen to them. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's all on how you take you know, cr- criticism, constructive yeah. criticism, right? Not the backhanded compliments. No offense, I <laughs> my no Italian offense, gets Luke. like yeah, but like the constructive criticism. I think a lot of people don't like to be criticized. I love. I'm like criticize me in a constructive way, all right? You want and, Absolutely, and take that and grow. Yeah, definitely. And, like, they're the stars. They're where they are. Obviously, they we're so, gonna listen. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I actually, I forgot to say this earlier, but I actually met Luke before. Oh, really? Um, this, yeah. And Ryan Seacrest too. Um, obviously cause he's the host. Yeah. But, um, while I was Miss America, I met both of them and actually I met them on the same night, funny enough, cause it was, um, the new year's rock and Eve in uh, New oh, York city. Really? And I was doing an interview with Ryan on the something on something and um so i did whatever <laughs> whatever, whatever it was i was doing interviews that you had to do yeah new year's eve interview with ryan seacrest so i did the interview and then um and uh, he was great obviously super nice and then when i went back to the hotel so the hotel i was staying at was like where all the celebrities that were there were staying and so my publicist was like um do you want to meet luke bryan i was like <laughs> sure. sure like yeah <laughs> so we she was like okay well he's on this floor we'll just stop and say hi and I'm like okay so we hopped off the elevator and um he was just right there like they were had they had like had the floor to themselves because it was his wife's birthday and they were having like a thing for her and um he was like Miss America oh my gosh like girl from Georgia because he's from Georgia so he was super proud and like excited to meet me and super nice and he was like he we chatted for like 15 minutes and he was like come join our party like meet my wife and like all these things. So he was super nice, but, um, did you remember that interaction? So yeah, after I, well, so I had short hair then yeah. I looked a lot different. I mean, it's been like six years. So, um, I told, I was like, we've actually met before. And he was like, I would never forget, um, uh, Miss jo- or Miss America from Georgia. Cause <laughs> we, I, we, we remember Georgia people who do cool things. So I was like, great. But, um, just a totally different vibe, obviously when you're being yeah. judged by someone instead like of that. just like a friendly interaction. Yeah. When you, yeah, yeah. And you can feel like you're on the same level, like at that point, but then here it was like, like different Luke. Yeah. <laughs> like, so what um like country music artist though are you like kind of looking up to when you're now for going into that genre? Um definitely Carrie Underwood. Okay. She's who I grew up listening to. I knew all her songs as a kid. Like that's she, I, if if I was singing for something I was singing Carrie Underwood most of the time. So she's definitely my my fave. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah. And I met her that same night, too. Really? And at the New Year's thing. Yeah. So that was a, a good night. I met a lot of cool people that night. But yeah. That's sick. Well, that was cool. <laughs> all right. Get back into it. So you're married for how, yes. how long have you been married? Um, we'll be married uh, four years this April. Oh, awesome. Yes. So on Validate Book, we always talk about dating because it's like the number one thing people ask you to talk about. <laughs> even though like I am 
completely, completely single. But um, I'm just like, sure, you know, I'll get people on here that have successful relationships. I've had people on here, like my friends, like myself, who've had non-successful relationships. Hey, you're going to get like a holistic view about dating, marriage, love life. Just so you can see all sides of it. It's not just negative like me. There's a lot of positive stuff. There's a lot of successful relationships. success out there. So I'm happy to be a love hater, but you know, that's why we have successful um, relationships out there. But how did you and your husband meet? So we met on Tinder, actually. Um, super romantic. And there's a TikTok about this because I saw it on yes. your page. Yes, yes. Um, it's all on my TikTok. But yeah, so we met on Tinder. Um, it's actually so, like, random. But, like, I downloaded it because I, I was in college at the time. This was before I was Miss Georgia, before any of that. And I was in college. And... Um, I had just gotten out of a really serious relationship. And so I just kind of wanted to like meet people and like have fun and like learn what I wanted in a guy. Cause I felt like it was just time for me to figure that out instead of just, you know, getting into serious relationships. Like I needed to like date around. And so I was, my friends were like, you should just download Tinder. Like this is like back when Tinder like first came out. Yeah. It's like, so this was in like 20. 15. <laughs> so back in olden days, which is weird. That was like the first dating app. Though. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Like for young people. Yeah. And so I, it was like for college students, I feel like. So I got on it for fun and I went on a bunch of different dates with a bunch of guys. And um, then I was just really frustrated with it. Cause it's like, you start talking to a bunch of different people and you like, you're texting like five different guys and it's like, yeah. okay, that's enough. Like yeah, enough. It's too much. Too yeah. much. <laughs> Slow down. So um, I was, I deleted it cause I was frustrated with it. And none of them were, none of the guys I was talking to were like panning out. Yeah. And so uh, I was frustrated, deleted it. And then like a week later I redownloaded it cause I ended it with all those guys. <laughs> and like the, I, I was actually praying about it. I was like, I was like, God, I'm like ready to find like my person. Like I'm ready to find the person I'm meant to be with. And, um, like, please, like, show him to me, you know, bring him to me. And, like, literally right after I redownloaded it, he was, Spencer, my husband, was the first person that I saw. And I was like, okay, like, he's hot. Because <laughs> it's, like, all you have to go yeah. off of on Tinder. And um, and so I swiped right on him. And it, he had already swiped right on yeah. me. So it was, like, an immediate mm-hmm. match. And so he messaged me first. Like, he was very gentlemanly like everything I was like I'm never gonna be the first person to yeah. message like I'm I'm I, old school like that I'm like you they, message yeah, me yeah I, I need like Bumble to do all cause like <laughs> Bumble you have to message the guy first and I'm like oh really yeah I didn't know like I've never obviously done Bumble yeah no, Bumble is like the different so like the women oh, okay. ew, no. like, so, I mean I guess some women I, like that yeah, but it's, it's not for me. Yeah. I'm just like, I want the guy to be like, hey, what's up? Yeah, like, <laughs> take charge, be we're a man. Like, we're from the South, we're old school. We are, we're from the South. Like, <laughs> I don't it's how we were raised. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so he messaged me, and he was like, hey, I'm, like, about to head to work, Um, but if you want to text, like, or if you want to chat, like, I'll if you want to exchange phone numbers, like if you're comfortable with that, like we could. And I was like, well, that's really nice. Like he asked if I was comfortable, like that's cool. And um, I was like, okay, like, yeah, like let's exchange phone numbers. What do you, I was like, what do you do for a living? He was like, I'm a cop. And I was like, oh, okay. Uh, interesting. <laughs> so um, I, first thing I did was ask him to send me a selfie because I was like, not about to be getting catfished yeah. or anything like that. So I was like, send me a selfie of you, like in your uniform. If that's like, you said you're going to work. So like send me a selfie of you in your uniform. So he sent me a selfie and it was so cute. Like he was so cute. And I was like, Oh my God, like he's legit good. So, um, and I could see like his uniform in the picture. And so, um, we ended up talking for a while and then it kind of just like, we just, we talked, we stopped talking randomly. And, um, I was going on a date with another guy that I knew in person that had asked me out and I'm too nice to say no. So that happens to me a lot. (laughs) Yeah. I feel that. Yeah. And so I, and like in the middle of that date, it was like so boring and so awful. And no offense to that guy. <laughs> They're not that he'll ever watch it. He's married now. Yeah, He's okay. happy. Yeah, I don't think he'll watch it. He so probably won't watch this. So, um, so I, Spencer texted me during that date, and I was like, "Oh, this guy! I forgot about this guy." And um, so I was like, "Hey, like I'm at a thing. I'm about to be getting out of it. I'm going home, so we can talk." So we ended up getting on the phone that night and talking for like three hours, and it was like such a connection. And you haven't even met him yet. No, huh. it was like total chemistry on the phone and um 
we were like, we have to meet, like we have to meet like now. And so he was like, let's meet tomorrow. Like, what are you doing? And I had an event, obviously I was Miss Warner Robbins at the time, um, which was my local title. And so, uh, I was like, I have an event, but after that, like, let's do something. And he was like, well, come to my apartment. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> like we haven't even met yet. And you want me to come to your apartment? Like, that's a little, it's a little sketch. But on Tinder, it'll show you like your um, mutual Facebook friends. So I, we actually had a mutual friend that I was actually really good friends with. So I messaged her and I was like, do you know this guy? Like, is he cool? Like, am I going to get you know, yeah. raped or something? <laughs> and he was like, she, or she, she was like, no, he's a super nice guy. Like he was my neighbor growing up. And I was like, what? Like, no, oh, we never met before. Cause she was a good friend of mine. Yeah. And um, she was like, he's great. Like, but I honestly, if I'm being real with you, Betty, like, I don't see you guys together. And I was like. Okay, like, she, and she had dated him in the past, oh, so I was really? like, someone's still interested yeah. in someone here, but, um, so I was like, okay, well, I'll let you know, so I ended up going to his apartment, he picked up Chinese food for us, Aww. and, um, this is, like, the super romantic part of the story, but now it gets romantic, so I, on the phone the night before, I was like, what if when we meet, it's like, like a movie moment where like we just see each other and we just have to kiss because we're just so connected yeah. and whatever and that's how i am very like hopelessly romantic like that and he was like i don't know like it might happen like we'll just have to see and so when i pulled up at the place he i got there before him which i hate and then he pulled in later and got me out of the car he was so gentlemanly like right off the bat always like opening the door for me and stuff and we got up, to, but okay, so when we got there and he, we got out of the car, there were like these kids like playing in the yard next door and the mom was out and they like knew Spencer and knew that this was his first date with me. <laughs> so was, like there was like no way that we were going to kiss like yeah. right off the bat. So I was like, well, there goes that, but you know, whatever, it's fine. Um, and so we go up to his apartment and he's like unpacking the Chinese food and he goes, oh, before I forget. And he just comes over and like kisses me. And it was so sweet and like so romantic. And I was like, man, this guy, like he is good. Like he, he actually listened to yeah, your he totally was listening and yeah. like took it seriously and knew that that was something I wanted. Yeah. We were obviously super attracted to each other. Yeah. So it wasn't like weird or anything. And, um, after that, like we just continued with, that was it. Like we just continued with our dinner and. It was just, like, the most, like, I thought it was the most take charge, like, sexy thing ever. Yeah. And um, the next, on our second date, he, or he asked me to be his girlfriend that night on the first date. And then on the second date, he told me he was in love with me. Oh, wow. And I told him, I reciprocated. I was like, yeah, back at you. Like, Well, I'm, you know when you know, you know. That's so. literally, it's so true. And people think that that's, like, cliche. But when you when it happens to you and you do meet that person, like when you know, you really do know. Yeah. And that's how it was with Spencer. Like we just had that connection and we were inseparable from then on. And mm. so, and he has been through Miss Georgia. He was there when I won Miss Georgia. He was there when I won Miss America. He waited for me that whole year. Oh, even though I never got to see him. Really? Now how yeah. was that? You never so got to see him? Like I saw him, I could count on him one hand how many times I saw him in that whole year. And, um, it was mainly because he was like going out of his way to drive to wherever I was to like, maybe like have dinner with me or something. Yeah. But it was very rare that I got to see him. And MAO was very like anti boyfriend. Like they didn't want you to publicly have a boyfriend. So they didn't really want you to spend time together and, or see each other or publicly be together. So it's, not about that, but okay. it's, it's very dated. It's yeah. very outdated rule, but, um, they still have that rule today? I I think that that rule is still there. Um, I know that now Miss America can have her own social media page, oh. which when I was Miss America, we couldn't. Like, you had to deactivate your personal pages and only use the Miss America pages, which made it so hard for you to grow on yeah. social media. Like, I had to wait till the end of my year to be able to tell people to go follow me on yeah. my new page. Um, so that was frustrating. But again, social media was still just kind of Very picking new, up yeah. then. So they didn't realize how important that was. Um, now they've changed that rule, but I think the boyfriend rule is still in effect that or girlfriend crazy. rule. Um, so yeah, that was, it was really, really hard. They did not want us spending time together. But that's so. true love. He waited, he waited. He was so faithful to me, like so loyal. We FaceTimed every night and, and then at the end of my year he proposed and Aww. yeah. So, <laughs> and then you all got married. Yes. Did you have like a big ceremony or was it small? Or? So we actually eloped at first. Cool. Um, we lived in Nashville after my year as Miss America and, um, we, our schedule was so crazy at that time. There was no like 
planning out far enough for to plan a big wedding, but we were tired of waiting. So we just kind of didn't tell anybody and went and got married in Nashville. Um, and then like six or seven months later, we had our big wedding and um, invited everybody. So, and it was a big, like I'm Greek and we yeah. had a big fat Greek wedding. Oh, that's so so cool. it was a definitely big fat and Greek. And um, we had like 400 people. Like that's it insane. A, it was huge. It was it was very big, a little too big, yeah. but, but it was um, just the most amazing night of my life. Like if, if I could go back and relive one day in my life, it would be that night. And now y'all live in Jupiter. Like what made yes. you move down here? Um, so we lived in Nashville for a while. Then we bought a house in Atlanta. Um, so we forewent the honeymoon. We didn't go on a honeymoon and we put our money towards our first home together instead because we're trying to be smart yeah. and um, financially smart. And I highly recommend that to yeah. anyone watching. Um, I like that. Like give up the honeymoon. You can go on trips the rest of your life. Yeah. But put your money, like all the money you're going to get as wedding gifts, like all that money, put it towards buying property like yeah. that is what you want to do I promise and um so we bought our first home we lived there for three years we did a lot of renovations on it and updated it and then uh after the pandemic was over um the market was so crazy it was like if we wanted to sell our house for a big profit like now was the time to do it so we decided to sell our house before we even knew where we were going to move but um Spencer's dream has always been to live at the beach and so with what we do for a living, we can live anywhere. It's just, we just need to have access to an airport and yeah. social media, internet. So um, we were like, okay, like let's start looking at some beach houses. And like, we didn't know what beach or where in Florida, but we knew we wanted to live in Florida. So um, we kind of stumbled across Jupiter because of the dog beach that they have. And it's such an amazing beach. And Jupiter is such a hidden gem. Like it's so beautiful and like quiet and so much to do. Like it's a small town, but it has everything that a big town has, like, as far as, like, just so much to do and, like, places to go and, and cool, just adventures, like, to be had. And so um, we ended up moving to Jupiter. We got really lucky finding our house. It's like a bungalow, beach bungalow oh, style. I love that. We love the it. dogs get to hang out on the beach. Yeah, too. they go with us every single time oh. we go. It's, it's been a dream. We love it so much. That's amazing. Yeah. I haven't been to Jupiter yet, but that's, like, on my list because I'm looking to buy, like, a place to I'm trying to, like, yeah. have, invest my money and buy a place so well yeah. for me and my dog. <laughs> and I'm like, then look at all up and down like the East Coast trying to find somewhere. But you I, definitely need to come visit. I gotta visit Jupiter. I mean, it's only 45 minutes yeah. from here, so you have to I feel come like visit. I go 45 minutes to Miami every day. And then, <sighs> yeah, like we'll take you to all the cool places. Yeah, and, I'll come visit. yeah definitely. I'm on dog beach. Bring your dog. Too. Yeah, dog yes. beach. Yes. Daisy loves the. <laughs> Bring Daisy. <laughs> Daisy loves the beach. She's oh like a pig God. rolling around <laughs> in the sand. In the sand. <laughs> yeah, I love it. That, that's that my dog. That is so cute. All right, before we close the whole show up, I just want to like ask you what are your plans next okay you've done american idol obviously you're miss america um like we talked about earlier it's important to try to keep growing so what's your yeah. plan next keep on your tiktok um yeah so right now i'm just putting all my focus into um just my social media my tiktok my instagram um obviously american idol still going so i've got a lot going on with that um but i i'm always just you know waiting to see what God is going to bring into my life. I don't really try to plan too much because the opportunities will come. Mm -hmm. And that's how it's been my whole life. Just I pray for God's signs and for God to bring the opportunities that, I, that are meant for me to me. And so I just kind of open myself up to that and whatever comes, comes. And um, I'm open to it and I'm excited for whatever opportunities come my way. But um, praying for Disney to give me a call. There we go. Um, praying for that email that. to come yeah. through. Um, but I think once I hit a million followers on TikTok, I think that that dream could really become yeah, a reality. Yeah, once you hit that million uh, follower marker, is crazy. Like, can open a lot of doors. Yeah, so, you're I'm so cost. excited. So I'm, I'm kind of banking on that right now. I'm just um, waiting to see what kind of comes through. Um, I've already had a lot of really cool opportunities come from TikTok. So um, I'm open to whatever God brings my way. And um, I have an amazing husband who supports me no matter what, like whatever I want to do. And, and, um, so, yeah, I'm just, I'm really blessed and I'm excited for the future, whatever it holds. Well, I'm super excited for you, too. I can't thank wait you. to see you on American Idol Monday. Yes, this Monday. Monday this Hollywood Monday. Week. Um, thank you for coming down. Absolutely. I really appreciate thank it. You for having Guys, me. I hope you got some amazing insight from Betty. She's absolutely <laughs> incredible. Um, follow her on Instagram at Real Betty Maxwell, TikTok at Real Betty Maxwell. You got it. Uh, see all her cool impressions. And <laughs> 
Uh, I can't wait to watch American Idol Monday. Thank, thank you. So, thank you Super so excited much. about that. I'm thank excited. you for coming. Thanks, guys, for listening to Validated Victoria. I have another podcast I'm filming today with my friend McKenna. And stay tuned for that because that one's going to be a really cool one on human trafficking story. Oh, really deep. wow. Really deep. I will so, tune in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we got a lot of cool people I'm scheduling during the wow, next couple weeks awesome. um, while I stay crazy busy and I fly actually to Vegas next week. But, Exciting. guys, thank you for listening to Validate Victoria. Keep watching, share it, listen on Spotify, watch it on YouTube, and I will catch you guys next time.